Hello again. We're going to tell you another story today. Uh, this one from about 1973. It started in New Bolingbroke in Lincolnshire when I'd left Firestone um, after working as a general line salesman for the company for many years and eventually Firestone were coming to an end. They, they'd been uh, taken over by their official American management who were gradually destroying the company in England and I couldn't see a future in staying with them so Ruth and I had had a go at starting our own business a few years earlier and we resurrected that and started it in a transport business in New Bolingbroke uh, initially collecting tyres and then we looked at doing general haulage uh, you know, we were trying to en en encourage local businesses. And the first business was our neighbours, Rundles. We lived uh, in, in a nice house with a, a maltings attached to the back of it. And Rundles, uh, the bo Rundles boss, John, lived next door in the old, in the old uh, pub, in the old Globe Inn. They had a, an agricultural engineering business in the town. It was pretty big, well, the town, the village, new town, new town, actually. And the, um, the uh, business was quite, extensive they made s several items of agricultural machinery they had an electrical side to the business uh, and basic repairs and they also did repairs for butlins fairground rides from all the butlins holiday camps that were dotted around england scotland and wales anyway my first one of the first jobs that i ever got with rundles was using uh, our old Volkswagen transporter pickup truck. They rang up and said, hey, can you nip down to Spalding, just over the side of Boston, with an auger? Because we've got a client who, who's who got a, he's just ordered an auger, and we're, the, our lorry's out, because their, their lorry, which I subsequently drove for a year, their lorry used to do general deliveries all around the area with castings and collecting machinery and but the journeys were planned, you know, days ahead. So this chap had rung up and he wanted this auger urgently because he'd got a load of grain that he wanted to sell and the lorries were coming. It was a big auger. It, it had to be stuck into an auger is a, a Archimedean screw kind of thing. It revolves in a tube and you stick the end of the tube in a big pile of grain and at the other end you hang it up over a lorry or over something and the grain spews out the top at high speed and it will fill a trailer, lorry or whatever quite quickly. So and then this chap needed his auger quickly so I, I dropped what I was doing and took the truck down to Rundle's yard and uh, they were just finishing off this uh, auger. They put a big motor on one end. They, they, actually, they built these augers you see to, to to order somebody wants an auger so long whatever dimensions they built it they got all the gear there to do that i can't remember how long this thing was i'm not joking it was nearly 30 foot long that's quite long and it stuck out um beyond the front of the pickup truck i had some bars at the front to lift things over the cab and it stuck out at the back with a um, big flag on the back. So we, we got this thing on. The main thing was to support the auger so that it didn't bend, you see. And it, this, this was such a long auger, it had rods attached to both sides of the tube. There's this fairly flimsy tube, which is... So we got this long auger with two rods on it either side to support it, stop it bending and breaking. And because when this chap was going to hang it up in a, in a roof somewhere, then it needed some uh, uh, rigidity to keep it, to give it um, some uh, shape, you know, so it didn't buckle and bend and break. So we got this mounted on the truck and I set off happily towards um, Boston, uh, New Bolingbroke, where we were 10 miles north of Boston, uh, on the way to Horncastle, uh, in the Fens, if you like, a fairly flat country. Got to Boston and wound my way round in round. It was, I think the Boston Bypass Road had sort of semi-started, if I remember rightly. Anyway, uh, I can't remember why. I went through the centre of the town. Um, we had to go over that new bridge, I know that. And I, I approached the bridge from the Odeon Cinema, so maybe the thing was only partly finished. 
Anyway, outside the Odeon Cinema, which is on South End in Boston, you go down through the marketplace and past Shodfriars Hall and then out um, South Street and South End. It's, and it's where the, uh, the Odeon Cinema used to be. I think it's gone now. So there's some traffic lights there before you turn right and go over that new bridge. So I was waiting at the lights or I was approaching the lights, approaching the lights very carefully. And all of a sudden, there's something hooted at me. And it just distracted me for a second. And before I realised where I was, I was getting very close to it. In, in front of me was a double-decker bus, a Lincolnshire road car bus, double-decker. Um, and I'd got a bit close to it. Anyway, I sort of rammed the brakes, put my foot on the brakes quickly. With a Volkswagen Transporter, you know, it's a bit like this. It's a forward control thing and... The engines at the back it was a proper Volkswagen with the four cylinder air cooled engine in the back it it had got it got a split windscreen it was that old I think well there's a picture and you'll see anyway it, it was fairly old so and it put, put the foot of the brakes and the, the thing sunk down well with that it brought this auger down um, it was right up in the sky, you see, and it brought us all down. It went, and in the final sort of movement of me just going forwards and just stopping, the two rods in the front of this auger went straight through the back of the bus, just below where the windy thing is that tells you where the bus is going. I mean, below the back window and above, <laughs> sort of in the staircase area. Oh, right. Well, I'd stopped. I mean, the, 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 as I actually, as the, the, it went up, thud, and these two, these two rods went into the back of the bus. And as the thing sank back again, then it settled down and the rods came out again. And there in the back of this bus was just two holes, two eyes. <laughs> Where are we? Uh, they were about, they're quite level, just below... They'd be about as big as a finger. Yeah, about as big as your finger. No, not as big as your thumb, but as big as a big finger. Something like that. So, oh, right. Anyway, with that, the bus driver got out. He must have felt a bit of an impact. So, because the folks in the bus, it was, I think it was going to Spalding. So they were going the same direction as me. So anyway, chap got out of the bus and uh, I got out of my truck and I said, hey, I'm, I'm sorry about that. <laughs> Just as I put my foot on the brake, it, this, the auger sort of, uh, and, it, and it donk, it, it punched two holes in the back of your bus. Uh, there's not a lot to see. Oh, well, he said, that's unusual. It's for, his language wasn't too uh, crude, if you like. It was just very, uh, um, what do you say, picturesque, you know. Anyway, we decided we would carry on and because we were going past the bus depot on London Road, then we'd stop there and have a word with his boss and show him what had happened. So uh, off we went, you see. He went ahead <laughs> and we pulled up. We knew, I knew where we were going. Actually, I used to live opposite where the bus carriage is in London Road for years and years. My grandmother was the last person to live there at 129 London Road. And the bus carriage was just diagonally opposite. So we pulled into the bus carriage. I think the passengers were quite amused. Nobody seemed to be agitated about, you know, I need to get on, I need to get on. I think they were interested in, in the story and what was happening to their bus that they were in. Plus there's this very small pickup truck behind them with this enormous auger on the back of it, sort of, you know, sticking out at the front and sticking out at the back. It seemed to have no end to it. So we went into the bus garage and we found his boss. And would you believe? Would you believe? I knew who, I knew him actually. A chap called Jeff Knight, and Jeff had been a lodger with my grandma at One Two Nine London Road when he first got married. So Jeff would be a lodger with my grandma in about nineteen fifty eight, fifty nine, something like that. So I knew Jeff. He did recognise me, and he said, "Oh yeah, how about this then?" And uh, we had a look, and we thought, "Well." It doesn't seem to be an awful lot of damage or anything, you know. And um, so uh, 
Oh well, he said, well, I think we'll just we we'll just knock it up to experience, <laughs> and uh, well, there we are. Well, we I don't think it'll take an awful lot of repairing, so he, 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 we didn't bother with exchanging details or anything. Um, when he looked at it, I knew knew the chap, and the bus driver was quite amused. The passengers seemed to be very amused as well. Anyway, I told him where I was going, and I was turning off at Gosberton. That's it. And he said, the bus driver said, well, I think you'd better go ahead of me this time. So there we are. We left the bus bus garage on London Road. I set off ahead of the bus this time. And he followed on behind. And there we are. So that's how we managed to punch two holes in the back of a double-decker bus with a Volkswagen pickup. And yeah. I, I never heard any more about it. But it's a lovely story and I hope you enjoyed that. Now if you did, then perhaps you would give us a like and even think about subscribing to the channel. I'm going to try a few more stories like this that that have, um, you know, face to face sort of thing with the pictures and, and see what you think of it. So give us a few comments if you like it. I would appreciate that. Um, you can see versions of this on our Buzzsprout site. So if you look up our website link, then you can find this story as audio uh, on Buzzsprout. You can also find it on It's a Rum Life Book 3, Tales from Ivy House, um, 1970 to 1984. And that you can download the whole book. And there's oodles of stories in there, you know, in conventional book form with lots and lots of pictures, all free. So um, I'm getting on now, you see, so it's really no point trying to flog these things. And I'd love people to enjoy listening and watching and, you know, enjoying the stories, really, which is why I do it. So leave us a comment. Subscribe to the channel if you can. That would help us an awful lot. It helps the channel to grow and share the stories with your mates. And don't forget to have a look at the website. So until the next time, thank you for being with us and cheerio.